So our trip out here to Anchor Eagle Outfitters really begins once you depart Anchorage. When you fly into Anchorage, you're kind of excited because you're already in Alaska, but reality doesn't hit you until you get on that small prop plane and you start the trek out here to Pedro Bay. Flying out here, the scenery is, it's something that you can't describe in words until you come out here and actually see it. Just looking out the window, you start to get a taste as far as what this week is going to have in store for us. The mountains are gorgeous, you got all these floodplains, the river's cutting through these gorges. Everybody here is coming for the same purpose, they're coming here for the same passion, and that is to fish in this area. So after about 40 minutes in the air, we see the gravel strip ahead of us and we land shortly after. Once we're on the ground, we're greeted by the staff from Anger Eagle. They have a whole bunch of ATVs there to load up all of our gear and take us out to the lodge. So we're getting settled into the lodge, getting ready for our first dinner tonight, and getting to know everybody that's gonna be in camp for the rest of the week. We've got our plans for tomorrow. We're heading out with Jeff. We're accessing the stream via float plane tomorrow. Can't wait to get on some fish. How's everybody doing this morning? Good. Good. Ready to catch some fish? Uh, looking forward to the first day as always. See if we can stick something. When, when you're flying out this way, it's just amazing to see how these rivers and waterways cut through the mountains and the, and the landscape out here and what it actually turns into. It's, it's crazy to see this from the air. You know, we started out in the mountains and then we got down into the flatlands. You know, you can come up here in a boat and you can see it, but once you get up in the air, you can really appreciate what the scenery is like. Yeah, we're in uh, southwest Alaska, uh, 180 air miles from Anchorage, uh, located in Lake Iliamna on the eastern side of the lake. Largest lake in Alaska that we're on. It's 80 miles by 25 miles, and uh, we're tucked up in the mountain section of the lake. We utilize our, our, uh, our beavers, our two de Havilland beavers. Uh, they're the trucks of the sky in Alaska. Uh, we also have two 28-foot uh, harbor craft boats that we utilize to get around, especially when the water's rough, and you can Imagine on an 80 mile lake, uh, the size of the wave sometimes, but uh, Alaska's a cruel mistress uh, and you really got to respect the weather, uh, respect what she throws at you. And our guys are knowledgeable, um, they have what it takes uh, to bring you home safe and get you on fish. Today started off, we took the float plane out. That was my first time in one of these, one of these planes and you don't really understand what Alaska is all about until you actually get here and do it. And that is the first experience that you get. We jump in a float plane and fly an hour over just beautiful landscape and then land in this river. And we get there quite possibly the best half day of fishing that I think I've ever had. We're on the Alagnac River today and we're gonna be fishing for chum salmon and silver salmon. Hopefully it'll be a good day. Looks like there's lots of fish around. That's a big bear. There's no shortage of bears. 
Is there a channel that's so far out or is this all flat water or what is? Well, it drops off once and we'll stand around the edge of that and then there's a trench. Okay. And then it drops off into the deep water and they fish right along this trench line. You can yep. kind of see the line in the sand. Yeah, that's there. where I've, you know, last 10 minutes they've been jumping it. Yeah. I'll get a flash in Uh huh. There's one. Get them. Let them run. Let them run right out all they want. And we'll just we'll chase them. I've never had a nine to five job. Ever since school, all I've done is take people fishing. You know, kind of the cool part about coming out here and and uh, taking people fishing out in basically the middle of nowhere, Alaska, is you get to see everybody on their days off. <laughs> you know, they're not they're not at their work. They're not at their maximum stress level. That's a fatty. Find me another place that's better than this. Jeez. There's so many more fish here. There's more fish here than anywhere else that you'll ever fish in the lower 48. It makes catching a little easier. I'm never, I'm never leaving. Like today, we were getting them on dry flies. You know, 10 to 15 pound salmon on dry flies. It doesn't happen anywhere else, really. And let's see just for a few casts if we can't raise one up on a dry fly. Are we just floating it down to them? Just, throw, just like your last one. Okay. Let it skate around like it's no big deal. I don't know if they'll bite it. Some sometimes they bite it, most times they miss it. But he might be able to. Oh. There he is, got him. <laughs> he came up and sipped it. <laughs> there you have it. Chum salmon on dry fly. Welcome to Alaska. We've had an amazing day out here on the river catching chum salmon and pink salmon and silver salmon and and now we're wrapping it up for the day, gonna hop back in the plane, fly back to the lodge where the fire's on and the, the hors d'oeuvres are out and the bar's open. So uh, it's kind of a cool thing, you know, we're pretty, pretty blessed with having not only a great fishery, but an absolutely amazing place to call home for the summer. I love it. There we are, boys. You know, it's not so much just the fishing. I mean, we have, a facility that's second to none. I've been around for over 20 years in this. You know, the lodging, the rooms, the food, the food's unbelievable, you know. Uh, great camaraderie, everybody eats together. We have a great time and, and you know, you see guests from all over the place meeting up here every year. You know, they say, hey, I'll see you here the same week next year. So, you know, it's a pretty unique place like that. It's very family, very fun. And uh, yeah, man, just to be able to guide here and do this job is pretty special. The Alaska wilderness is such a beautiful place and the fishing here is incredible. So I always want to make sure that what I'm putting out there matches that level of beautiful and that level of interesting and unique with that Alaskan quality. And we want to make sure that everybody gets the top-notch service that they deserve and food to match the quality of their life while they're here. Because it's a very special place we have incredible fishing, incredible, beautiful wilderness. It's really easy for people to remember the fish that they catch, but it's also important to me to make sure they remember the food that they eat while they're here. So we were the first ones back, got settled in back into the lodge, and once dinner was set up, we started talking with some of the other folks, and everybody else went off and fished a completely different body of water for different species you're sitting around up at the lodge and you're having conversations with everybody and you're hearing all these fish stories and you start bonding with all these folks and you know it feels like you've been coming here for years with them and you only met them the day before. So we are heading out with Logan, and we're gonna go float one of the one of the small rivers, about 20 minute float plane ride to it. We're just gonna be going after big bows all day today. The folks that went out there yesterday and fished. I think what they say they caught something like they boated like 40 fish or something. So should be another fun day in Alaska.
We take all sorts of fishermen from, you know, age groups, little kids. I mean, we've had five-year-old kids all the way up to 85-year-old uh, grown-ups. So, uh, novice to professionals, it doesn't matter. Uh, we hire uh, guides that are well-seasoned, uh, been fishing in Alaska or guiding elsewhere, um, and they have the skills and the knowledge to, uh, to teach folks no matter what their skill level is. Uh, it's a service industry job, and that's what we're here to do, is serve our clients. You know, they give us the opportunity to take them out during the day and give us a job to do it. Alaska is an unreal experience. Uh, when you first come in, you fly from Anchorage to Pedro Bay in our area. You'll fly through Lake Clark Pass. You can actually reach out and touch the glaciers. There's something about mountains that just adds another concept to your visualization of an area. Uh, this, this place is just unbelievable. You've got five species of salmon that come in here. Everything is based on the salmon. If you don't have the salmon, you don't have the eagles, you don't have the wolverine, the bear have nothing to eat, put on the weight for the winter. It's, it's just phenomenal. Alaska is special, especially these remote areas, because there's all kinds of little streams that dump into Cook Inlet and other areas that the salmon come up into that a lot of people don't know about. This is something that people come back over and over again, not just for the fishing, but for the experience. Alaska is not a fishing trip. Alaska is a, is, is a visual and almost a spiritual experience that is really hard to understand until you come up here. Got a few spots that I've been watching, seeing, seeing some big fish push into them finally. The trout are just reaping their rewards right now. Have they, have these fish spawned out yet or do they spawn out in stages? They spawn out in stages. Uh, the ones up top more have spawned out. Okay. And you'll be able to tell when they're about to start spawning. They'll be paired up. You can just start seeing beds more and more down the river. Do the bows know that? Like they come up and they see them spawn out like, all right, so now we're gonna go back down and find fish that haven't spawned yet? Absolutely. You definitely can see a, a see a change in the river. Um, the top part will be fishing good for a little while, and then it'll be the middle part, and then the bottom part will just be on fire as gotcha. well. Gotcha. So right around this corner, we'll stop at the first hole and have a few big ones I've been seeing sitting in there, so we'll try to sight cast them out of it. You ran a run through here yesterday, right? Yeah. How'd, you guys, how'd you guys do? Oh, we probably caught 40 or 50 fish, about 10 over 20 inches couple in the 24 range and you're setting the bar high for me today <laughs> have to do something for us <laughs> these sockeye do they um do they peak and they're all kind of uniform in size because most of them are uniform in size you will get the few that are substantially bigger yeah but for the most part they're all they're all pretty much around the same size gotcha and then you'll you'll get the scattered ones that are you know, a year too early, and then the ones that stayed out a little bit longer or just have better genetics. All right, guys, we are good to go. So right in front of this big rock, there's a little bit of a deeper trench. This one right here? Yep, okay. and there's a few good ones that I've seen sitting in there, so we'll try to get a hook on them and get them in the net for us. Sweet, man. So this is all sight fishing, just looking for the sockeye and then finding a bow that's behind him. With this shallow stuff, that's the best way to do it. Gotcha. This is like, minus all of the red fish everywhere, like this is Lake Erie tributary sight fishing. Oh yeah, it's best in the world for a reason. Yep. Do they like it on the swing or do they like really natural presentation? They like really natural presentations. I gotcha. They, that's what these fish are sitting here looking for. Oh, I see that bow. Yeah, I saw that one dart out. He, yep. he cast it, he swung. I, I could see him sitting there. Yep. 
So if you get that a little bit further up, that's gonna drift right down to a couple sitting okay. back there. Gotcha. There we go. Good one to start it. He opened up good yeah. for that. That nice, didn't take long. Nice little resident. He's hungry. You're doing some work on that seven weight. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Best fighters in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Little resident bow. So today we did something completely different than yesterday. Today we went smaller water, fish for big resident bows, trying to find these big bows in the sea of sockeye. It was absolutely insane. I, I don't know how many fish we caught, but every spot that we stopped, we're sight fishing for these big bows. You're watching all these sockeye. And you're like, yep, there's a light spot, there's a bow throwing eggs, throwing flesh flies, caught one on a big leech. Look at that fish! <laughs> God, that's why you come to Alaska. It was just an epic day. I have no idea how many fish we caught, but every one, you know, every spot, you're like, well, there's a mid-20s bow. I think the biggest one we got today was uh, one of the guys got a 26er, I got one that was 24. These are all resident wild rainbows. There's nowhere else that you're gonna be able to find an opportunity to do this. Awesome. Look at this fish. We got six days of fishing. Like statistically over experience, like by day five and six, like do people have use of their arm after that? <laughs> He's got some shoulders to him. It's a nice grayling. That's a really cool, pretty fish. I'm happy we got into one of those. Yes, sir. Kind of rare for up here. Yeah. I mean, you got the bucket list fish that you want to get from Alaska. Yep. Grayling is on it. Grayling. Not even targeting them. Absolutely. Stick a good one. All right, right in front of this rock. You got that one? Right here? Yes, yep. sir. So we went out today looking for big bows, but we ended up getting a char, grayling, sockeye, and the big bows. You just can't beat the species diversity. Coming up here, one of the most important things that you can rely on is your guide. And it's well beyond, you know, just the fishing knowledge, but it's also the safety piece to it. We're getting flown in. You're in the middle of absolute nowhere and you got guides that are very, very familiar with the body of water. We were out today with Logan and he's fished that stream a couple times the past two weeks and he's been here for five years. He knows every turn, every bend in that stream that we were at. One of the fish that we ended up hooking up with today, he, he actually pointed that fish out. He's like, yep, there's a big one that's around this corner at this one drift. I want to get on that fish. He's been giving me headaches the last couple weeks. I want to hook that fish. You're going to eat it, you're going to wear it. Get him. Got yes! <laughs> Let him run. Let him run. That's this, a good one. This is the one that I've been looking for for about a month now. <laughs> I hate this fish. <laughs> he knew that river so well that we were able to key on one specific fish that he knew where that fish was going to be before we even got there. <laughs> a boy! Jesus! I've fished Hammer. for this. I've hit fish for this thing for so long. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Look at this fish. That's a beast. <laughs> Ready? He's gonna go. Making sure the stash looks good. Stash looks good. Oh, nice. You got the handlebars. I had. I had to switch it up. It was a mid-season, mid-season decision. <laughs> yeah, it's got a little bit hazy from the wildfires over in Kenai. Kind of pushed some smoke in on us, but been absolutely killing fish today, and it's been a blast. So we're gonna hop down to hop down to another hole that I call the canyon, and we're gonna just continue to continue to crush it. <laughs> you want to redo that one? <laughs> that last little part? I want the best guides in Alaska. People that want to help people have a great experience. One of the best ways I can describe Alaska is every day I walk out and it takes my breath away. Again, you're going to see things you won't see in the lower 48. 
So our Alaska operation puts you right in the heart of some of the best fishing in the world, bar none. Uh, I want people to have a really first class experience. If you're taking care of people, if the service is everything that you could want, that's the best marketing I can have because people tell each other. Uh, the guide that took me out was top notch. He knew his stuff. Uh, the food was incredible. The places we were staying were extremely comfortable. That to me is what I'm all about, is let's make people enjoy the outdoors even more than they thought possible. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> I'm, never, I'm never leaving. Oh my God, that is just a gorgeous fish, man. You're not gonna find this anywhere else.